Our Heavenly Father, we say thank you once again for such a time as this. Lord, as we look into the word, we pray that uh, your spirit may speak to our hearts and Jesus Christ may be lifted uh, in these sessions. Bless your children as we share. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Uh, uh, I want to say that uh, the Lord uh, is uh, willing to bless us more and uh, help us to restore everything that uh, the enemy has taken away. And uh, our, our purpose of living is to live for Christ, to have that relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, to enjoy a relationship with him. But uh, sin has separated us from God. And uh, that is why we need to go back to the original and see to the origins and see what the Lord is speaking to us. Uh, we thank the Lord for the session that has passed. And uh, for this session, we are praying that uh, the Lord may work uh, also mightily that uh, we may get to know his will. The title of the presentation is, uh, Where is the Woman? You could have thought that uh, I would start with, um, Where is the Man? Because for a woman to be found, there must be a man. Because Eve came from Adam. But uh, I'll start with the woman so that uh, when we reach to a man, we see some things that uh, the Lord is speaking to us. The book of uh, uh, Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22. This is uh, what uh, the Bible tells us. This is what uh, the Bible tells us. Whoso findeth uh, a wife findeth a good thing and uh, obtaineth favor of the Lord. Now, marriage to many is uh, thought to be uh, a utopia where actually people expect a lot and much from others. And we saw in the last session that uh, the purpose of marriage is for you to give. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The reason why many marriages have been uh, a disappointment is that uh, people have come into marriages thinking to receive and receive and receive, but uh, they are few people who come into the marriages to give out all their own. But you are looking to this issue, where is the woman? And uh, the Bible tells us, who so findeth a wife, findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Solomon says that um, uh, he has a lot of concubines and many of uh, the maids he had, but uh, he has only one loved one. And uh, he rejoiced in having this Shunammite woman because I think that uh, it was the fulfillment of all that he desired. And so we so find it such a wife, actually we find that uh, he find it a good thing. But uh, there's a lot of problems that uh, marriages actually face. And uh, Proverbs uh, 21:19. Many people, as uh, the statement has been said, many people that are in marriages which are not working, many are contemplating if there was a chance how they could uh, uh, go outside that those marriages. And those who are single are thinking about how can they enter into marriages. And so there is a complication of everything, but this is not how God actually wanted things to be when he created Adam and Eve. But because no one is willing to give everything in the marriage, then uh, there has been uh, uh, 
are wishing to get out of it and others wishing to come in, which should not be the case. In Proverbs 21, 19, we are told, it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. You think about that uh, for a moment and uh, you ask us yourself, why the person who has decided to live with you just be contentious, decide to be angry with you? As a person who has decided to live forever with you, why should they be contentious? And uh, the reason why many marriages have not been working is because uh, there have been uh, unfortunate things that have happened. When uh, Adam and Eve were created, actually, Adam did not go looking after many uh, Adam did not have a chance of uh, seeing this woman and that woman and uh, doing what men and women do, especially in these times so where actually they date this woman and they date that woman and uh, a woman is in relationship with another woman, uh, man and this and this. And so you find that uh, uh, the hearts of uh, many men and women have passed through many hands. And so because of what they have experienced before they marry, uh, the things that have piled in their hearts have left their broken uh, hearts and uh, has left their holes. And uh, just at a small provocation, you find that these things are rising in the hearts of uh, the couples who are in marriages because some of them did not just have a chance of getting that one man or that woman and get married to them. And so there is always rising contentions in the hearts of the people. And at a small provocation, they find themselves that they are revisiting what they experienced in other relationships and they bring them in the marriage. And so this is something unfortunate. This is not the way the Lord wanted it to be. He wanted that a man would pray and find a woman and get married to that woman without testing this and testing that. And even a woman will get just that one man and get married so that there may be no, uh, uh, there may be no uh, heartaches and uh, past experiences which will bring girl to their marriage. And so you find that uh, the reason why there is contentions in the family is that uh, people are trying to compare their marriages with the other relationship they have had. But uh, my question has always been, if uh, your relationship was that so good, why did you find yourself marrying yourself this man? It means that because it didn't work out well, that is why you are in the marriage that you are in. And because you have made vows, then you should stick to that marriage and try not to bring in your past experience of the men or the women which you have dealt with. And so we are looking at where is this woman who have learned that once she has come to the marriage, she has really uh, come to give her all and not compare the man that she's living with, with the other relationship that, that, that she had uh, before. This is what actually has made many women contentious and angry uh, to their husband because they, they, they start comparing their, their husbands to the previous relationship they had. And, uh, if uh, you have gone through this and uh, you are a woman, you have to run to Jesus Christ and get healed so that uh, the holes that uh, men have left in your hearts may be removed and you may come to understand that God has given you a place where you have to bring happiness and not uh, the sadness of uh, the previous experiences you had. And so uh, marriages are not working because uh, many women are contentious and are angry at their men because they will not get the fulfillment that they want just because maybe they were provided with something somewhere and now they are seeing that uh, their, uh, their men can provide for that. And we need not to have such a women in our lives who are contentious because we are being told it is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an, an angry woman. And, uh, there's this uh, 
analogy that uh, people always bring about that uh, a woman would like to get uh, a man who is like uh, his father. But uh, I, I find that uh, an erroneous kind of thinking that uh, a woman should uh, be able to, should be looking for a man who is like uh, his own father. Uh, that can't happen. And this is why many women are dissatisfied in their marriage because they are comparing their husbands with the, their fathers. This cannot be for a minute because uh, uh, people are created with uh, different attributes and they approach things in a different way. Or, although uh, the principles laid in the Bible are the principles that guide men, but uh, we, we look at things in a different way and you cannot expect your husband to uh, view things the way your father views them. And so if you start comparing your husband with your father, you miss really the object uh, why you are uh, married. And uh, I don't mean to be uh, disrespectful, but uh, if you do that, why then will you uh, be in this man's house if uh, you have just to continue comparing him with your father? It means that uh, you are not satisfied with uh, what the Lord has given you or you are in the wrong place uh, in your life. Proverbs chapter 25, verses 24. Proverbs uh, 25, 24. And so, Proverbs 25, 24. Uh, Many women having turned contentious, actually they have caused sorrows in the lives of their husbands. And uh, this has led to even suicides happening. But the problem per se is not uh, this marriage they are in. It is the way they conducted their courtship and all these things. And uh, I, I will say that uh, if uh, your courtship is not working, don't try to take it into marriage thinking that uh, you can change anything. You cannot change a heart of a man. Conviction if, is of the Holy Spirit. And uh, uh, we saw that um, even don't get into courtship if uh, you are not prepared to get married. Pray about it, not hurry into things. Uh, seek the Lord in prayer so that you may come to a point that uh, if you will enter into courtship, if you will go to introduce yourself to uh, uh, the parents of a man or the parents of the girl, then be sure what you are doing so that uh, you may not uh, backtrack your steps. And so many people have gone through courtship and we are dealing with courtship and marriage and we are looking at this theme where is uh, the woman. Uh, many people have uh, found themselves in difficult situations in courtship and they thought that uh, maybe just getting into marriage will somehow change things and uh, things will be better. But uh, that's a, a wrong way of doing things. That's a wrong way of doing things. Don't think that if your courtship cannot be better, then the marriage can be better in any way. Courtship is an index of what marriage will be. And so if uh, your courtship is not working, you better think twice before you march uh, uh, to the ASL and uh, uh, give your vows and then uh, you cause your husband to go through this. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman and in a wild house. Now, when you consider about uh, uh, this issue of uh, uh, staying at the housetop, the, the uttermost uh, corner of the house, this is uh, a place where it means that uh, things have been pushed onto the edge until uh, there's no way out. And the only thing you will want is to stay in the corner of the house. And if you stay in the corner of the house at the house top, what you are thinking is just falling outside the house. This is the uh, kind of marriage that uh, men and women are in uh, because they have not worked on their courtship. And so it will be important to work on our courtships and uh, be in harmony before we uh, decide to march together because there is no way two can work together if they have uh, not agreed. And uh, talking about uh, 
water has been come to be contentions between men and women. When you look at uh, uh, God uh, in creation in the book of Genesis chapter one, he made a man and a woman. And uh, there are so many things to consider. This may seem uh, 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 trivial things, but uh, I'd like you to consider one thing when uh, uh, man is creating, uh, a God is creating man and a woman. These are things that are not considered, but there's a reason that they happen the way they happen. And uh, when we are entering into friendship, relationship and courtship, these are the things that we should consider. God says, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness. Now that is profound, bearing in mind that this man and this woman want to be married and they want to stay together. And if marriage is an image of uh, the father and the son, then uh, uh, co consider this. God, the father, is uh, the greatest, and then he has a son, meaning that he was before the son. And this should deal with the issues to do with the uh, age and uh, some of the equalities that uh, women would want to seek in, uh, in marriage, because you find that uh, Many of the brawling in marriage and courtship is because uh, there is this uh, contention that uh, men and women are equal in marriage, which uh, uh, they did not study much about it to know what the Lord is talking about when he talks about uh, equality. But uh, the father was, and then the son uh, is. And then when Adam and Eve uh, are being created, man is a little bit uh, uh, taller than the than. Uh, the woman and the woman is just a little bit uh, uh, on his shoulders. Th these are the things that uh, you have to think about when you are entering into marriage uh, and uh, women have to consider them that uh, uh, there is uh, an order of things in marriage. There is a priest in the family. She is not the priest and she is not to order things, but she should be submissive knowing that uh, she came from uh, a man and uh, she was created a little shorter than the man. And even the man was, uh, uh, can I say, a bit older than her. And so the issues of equality also brings about uh, contentions in, in marriage and in courtship, something that should be solved before you enter into courtship. These are the things that you have to consider and be able to deal with before you come to the marriage. And so the there's an issue, another issue that uh, rises with courtship and marriage, the issue that uh, uh, my husband doesn't love me enough. Uh, this is another thing that uh, really you don't have to get into marriage when you are not loved enough. Because how do you get into a marriage where you are not loved? And then uh, it, it comes to a point that uh, uh, it is complaints after complaints that uh, the man doesn't uh, love me enough. But uh, uh, I'd like to pose a challenge to women and ladies that uh, really the fact that a man has proposed to you and uh, we are talking about uh, uh, Christians, we are not talking about worldlings who are chasing after the wind and what they will gain in marriage. The fact that a man can stand before you and propose to marry you, it's enough evidence of love. But not only that, uh, you should be able to interact with this person. You should be able to have a one-on-one -on -one with this person so that uh, you may learn his characters, you may learn about his family, you may learn about his disposition so that uh, you may avoid these issues that uh, are married to a man that doesn't love me. And in the end, uh, you find yourself in a marriage where you are struggling to come out or you are struggling to live there and it becomes a problem, a marriage that uh, doesn't really uh, have the joy to be uh, there. You don't want to be in a marriage where you are regretting because time is too short to be regretted about in what we are doing. Uh, uh, we have a little time to live in this world and whatever we do, we have to do knowing what we are doing is a, a sure thing. The book of First Corinthians chapter 11. First Corinthians chapter 11. Remember, we are looking at uh, where is uh, this woman who will be able to understand her marriage obligations. First Corinthians chapter 11, and uh, I look at uh, verses one to verses three. 
And uh, it is still under the subjection of uh, submission and understanding that uh, the man is the priest uh, in your relationship, in your courtship. Uh, a woman ought to have a respect for, for man, but uh, there's always a lacking of respect that is uh, practiced in courtship and then it is carried on in marriage and then marriages do not work. Be followers of me, even us, I also am um, of Christ. Now, this is Paul admonishing us and uh, admonishing couples because you will see, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Now, this is profound that uh, Paul doesn't mean his words. We are not talking about anything, but we are talking about the church because while he's talking about this, he have the analogy of the church, which is the bride and Christ, which is the bridegroom. And he is applying these things to marriage. Yet many in courtship and in marriage will uh, accept to the first clause of the statement, but I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Everyone will say amen to that. And they don't have a problem with that. And when we are talking about the head of, uh, uh, of every man is Christ and the head of Christ is God, men we, many will say amen uh, because they see that the father is perfect and the son is perfect and there's no reason uh, why they should not agree with the statement that the head of Christ is God. But look at uh, the statement that says that uh, the head of a woman is the man. And uh, I'm not talking about uh, the issue of uh, exercising lordship over the partners, over the couples, and uh, the issue of uh, overbearing rulership that uh, men exercise in courtship and uh, in marriage. No, I'm talking about where there is that uh, 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 awareness that uh, when you are coming into this, you have somebody whom you are under and we shall be looking at uh, where is the man where we shall find that uh, just the statement that uh, the head of every woman is uh, a man, it uh, entails a lot. It is just beyond you being recognized as the person who is leading devotions in the house, the person who is to say and things happen in the family, but uh, there are many things connected uh, to uh, the issue of uh, 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 the woman, uh, the man being the head of every woman. Man is not called, and uh, I'll say this cautiously, man is not called to be under a woman. This should not be the case. And uh, what do I mean this? That uh, the man, man was created to have dominion and rule. And that was even before sin. And so a woman who will exercise lordship or will exercise to be in the seat of a man will always find her marriage not working. And uh, this was before sin. Leave alone the issue of sin coming and then, uh, uh, and then uh, God saying to a woman that uh, uh, your desires shall be upon man. No, man was created to have dominion. Man was created to rule. And uh, it was not to rule with cruelty, but uh, that rulership is to guide, to admonish, and uh, to make sure that everything is safe. And uh, no woman who chooses to be in the place of a man will find their marriage and their courtship uh, 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 working out. And if you try this, only what you'll find is chaos because you will be exercising to be in a position where God has not put you. So the head of Christ is, uh, 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 is God and the head of uh, uh, every woman is a man. And then you should understand that the head of man is Christ, which means that uh, the man is to get the things or Christ is to get things from God and he delivers it to man and the man is to deliver to the a wife. And so this should be the order of things. But because sin has come in and things have been uh, reversed, you find that uh, many marriages are failing. And this is how Satan would want it to be by uh, uh, letting people exercise what is not 
men for uh, them. And so uh, a woman doesn't have to usurp authority and uh, try to play husband or try to play the man in the courtship or in the marriage. Ephesians chapter five, verses 22. Ephesians five, verses 22. And uh, this is a, a profound statement which uh, I'm reading, talking about uh, uh, everyone recognizing and realizing their position in courtship and in marriage so that uh, uh, this courtship may work out better. Ephesians 5.22 says, Wives, submit yourself unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. And so when uh, two people come together and they want to get into marriage and they want to have family and they want that small family to be a miniature of what heaven is, there is something that uh, a woman has to realize, a wife has to realize, she has to be submissive to their own husband. Now they are submissive to their own husbands as they are submissive to the Lord. Uh, a woman who is submissive to the husband or a woman who is not submissive to the uh, will uh, we really request that uh, if we join ourselves so that uh, we may not interfere with the recording. We just really uh, ask you to mute yourselves. Uh, I'm talking about uh, a woman has to be submissive to the husband as uh, uh, she is, uh, she will be submissive to the, to the Lord. Think about this. And uh, there have been instances that uh, people have said, okay, I have to be submissive in my courtship and in my marriage because the man is also submissive or the man is better. Now, you shouldn't be getting into marriage with a man who is not uh, also submissive. But uh, if you will do this, if you will enter into the marriage, understand that you have to be submissive. In courtship, you have to be submissive. Remember, what you practice in the courtship is what we practice in the house also. And so if you are not submissive in courtship, you will never be submissive in marriages. And this is what happens. People think that uh, they can do things in courtship and all of a sudden, when they enter into the marriages, actually, uh, these things change. So if you are not submissive in uh, your courtship, also you will not be submissive to the marriage. And a woman who is not submissive to the husband is unsubmissive to the Lord because we are being told that um, uh, women or wife be submissive to your husband as to the Lord. Now you will ask, what if my husband is not submissive? First of all, as I have said, you shouldn't be getting into marriage with a person who is not submissive. And if this has to fail in the courtship, then you should understand that as you get into the marriage, it will be even harder because people say that uh, the way you go to marriage like that in the marriage uh, too. And so, we have a, an instance where we have a husband who was not submissive, and I'm talking about the man Nabal and uh, the wife who was uh, uh, Abigail. The wife who was Abigail. And uh, uh, the wife Abigail dealt with a husband who was uh, a man who was not cultured after the, the character of God. But uh, when David came to seek some help, uh, Nabal turned uh, uh, David away. But Abigail, when she heard of the report, she didn't go about uh, uh, quarreling the husband or uh, 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 rising above him, but uh, she prayed unto the Lord and waited the Lord to act. This is way the things should be. and. Uh, Somebody is asking, what does it mean to be submissive? We have been told that um, wives be submissive to, to your husbands as you will be submissive to the Lord. And uh, I take the word submissive as uh, 
one who is able to listen to instruction, one who is able to adhere to what she is being told. But um, it shouldn't be this submissive where actually you are submitting to sin, but um, you should be submitting to uh, uh, only what um, is uh, right in the Bible. So uh, we submit to the Lord. Uh, how do we submit to the Lord? We submit to the Lord according to his word. Also, you submit to your husband according to his word. But remember, a man who Christ is the head will always guide the wife and the family according to the will of God. And so we are told that as the man is the priest of the house, then a woman ought to be submissive to this man because he is standing in the family instead of Christ. And so we ought to learn this submission which um, God has put there in the biblical order that should be in, in the house. And uh, uh, if uh, you find that uh, a woman, when she's not submissive to the man, the man has a double problem in the home. And so uh, what we need are um, a converted people. We need to have uh, the wives or the partners of the couples converted so that they will reach at a point that uh, they, uh, they can follow the order of the Bible. Now, we are not talking about world relationships and world marriage. We are talking about the people who have got the light and they are professing present truth. And maybe these things are getting uh, you in your marriage when uh, you didn't know what is truth, but uh, we can still learn what is the will of God and be able to get submitted uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to the Lord as uh, he will want. And uh, another issue that uh, comes with courtship and marriage, uh, and uh, which I have seen uh, that has made many, uh, many courtships and marriages to fail is uh, uh, people contending for their rights. I don't know what that means, but uh, you find that uh, a woman or a man is saying that uh, you are uh, infringing my rights, you are, uh, uh, you are not giving me my rights. But uh, in this world we are living in, uh, the thing that should be in our heart, the most foremost thing, it should be that uh, have our hearts been given to Jesus Christ. What are these rights that you have to contend to? Because uh, Christ himself had a right to going back to heaven when he came to his own and his own uh, uh, did not uh, uh, did not accept him. He will have gone back to heaven. And so you are in this marriage that uh, seems not to work in, but uh, it will never work if uh, what you continue pressing for is your own right. We, we cannot succeed in our marriages when we think that we have some rights which are not being fulfilled and they have to be fulfilled. If uh, we will contend with this, then you will live a miserable life where you are expecting your rights and then your rights are not coming forth. What shall you do if you are in a marriage that uh, what you are calling quotes, your rights are not being given? The book of First Peter, First Peter chapter three, and this is a, a, a familiar uh, chapter when talking about uh, marriage. First Peter chapter three. And we were just talking about subjection, being submissive. And uh, we are talking about where is this woman, where is this uh, uh, wife that uh, will make her marriage be able to work? And uh, you are in this marriage that uh, you, you think that your rights are not being given. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be one by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that of outward adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corrupt, but even the ornament of meek and quiet spirit, which is this in the sight of God, of great peace, Christ. Now, this woman in the book of First Peter chapter five, seems that she's married to a man who actually 
uh, doesn't give uh, her all the rights that she thinks that are her rights or doesn't fulfill everything that the man should be fulfilling in marriage. And so the Lord is uh, advising this woman that uh, be uh, in subjection to your husband. And if he doesn't obey, if he is not uh, uh, doing what you think that should be done according to the word of the Lord, he should be warned by your chaste conversation. If he, when he sees your conversation, when he sees your mixed spirit, then this should win over. There is no need of fighting in courtship and in marriage. We have to be subject to each other and be able to show the meekness of the spirit without fighting of words or a brawling and then marriage will be able to work out. As you continue in prayer, God will be able to answer your prayers. Let us pursue this issue of uh, First Peter chapter five, talking about uh, women. And uh, when you pursue it uh, at, uh, with the theme of the sanctuary, think about this. And uh, women have privilege because they had been called the church. And in the church, think about this for a moment. In the church, you find uh, converted people and unconverted people, is it true? The, the church is a housing for people who are not complete. Is it true? Yeah, that, that is how the church is. And the woman is called a church. And so a woman will have people in her life which are not complete. Let us try to take the analogy of the sanctuary and the church. The woman will have somebody in their lives, be it a husband, be it children, who are not what? Complete. Because the church houses everyone professing to be a believer and they are hypocrites. What if you find yourself in a situation, you are a woman and these are the kinds of the people you are having in your life. The church is admonished to nurture such a people. The church is admonished to care for that people. And the woman being that church, which is the sanctuary, uh, look at the sanctuary and you are taking the woman as a church and that sanctuary and they have been given this privilege Peter says that um, this woman, if she have a husband who does not obey, let her conversation, her meekness of the spirit change this woman. Look at the sanctuary, how it was built. The sanctuary, when it was being built, uh, you find that the adorning of the sanctuary, because we are being told that let not the woman, uh, uh, her adorning be of the outside. The adorning of the outside will never win back a man to you who is not behaving as he should be behaving. But uh, the, the meekness of the spirit will win back this man. Take a, a look at this. When the sanctuary is being built, the adorning is not in the outside. We are not saying that women should not dress well, but they are being referred to that church, that sanctuary. In the outside, what is at the uppermost part is the Hanabaja skin. What, what is so important about the Hanabaja skin? It is so thick that anything cannot penetrate. But this sanctuary, this church that is covered with the Hanabaja skin, inside it's overlaid with pure gold. That is the woman we are talking about. Where is this woman? That her heart is overlaid with gold. And she is able to have this skin to resist everything that comes to her. Not in fighting but adorning her heart with pure gold, which is the faith of Jesus Christ. And then she can be able to win this man and to convict this man to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And we have never seen a woman who has prayed in the Bible and things did not happen. Think about the women whom you adore in the Bible. Every time they went on their knees, something happens. And this is the woman that we are looking unto. And somebody will say, uh, so you mean that uh, you must have a perfect woman to marry. You can answer yourself that question because I cannot answer such a question. We are just giving principles that uh, actually are in the word of God. And so a woman being privileged to be called a church, that sanctuary, she has to understand the sanctuary well, the way it is built and uh, the way it has to function because it is this sanctuary that the Lord built and say that, uh, build me a sanctuary that I may dwell among you. And so, 
a woman who understands who she is will make the presence of God a body in the family. But a woman who doesn't understand who she is, as she is called the church, she will never make the presence of the, of the Lord come into the family. And uh, when a woman understands she is the church and she has been uh, given this privilege of making the presence of God be in the house, then you understand one thing. Where the presence of God is, there is no darkness. There is the fullness of joy. You may be hungry. You may have this abusive white uh, husband. But because you have the presence of God, you can enable the whole heavens to come down and commune with you. Then you will always have the peace that surpasses everything. Because Christ in uh, John 16, 33, he says that in this world you will have many tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome it. Then in the promise of the comforter, which is the most important thing he says in John chapter 14, verse 27, peace I give unto you, my own peace, not as the world give it, but my own peace I give unto you. So the woman who understands that she is a church and the work of the church is to, uh, 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 to rise up and be in the presence of God and the presence of God to come and encompass them, she will be able to bring down the presence of God in the family. And where there has been darkness, where there is light, there is no darkness. The husband will always uh, 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 feel ashamed to wrong this woman. If this woman is a prayerful person and she can bring down the presence of God. But if a woman cannot bring the presence of God, inside her relationship, inside her courtship and marriage, don't expect that actually this woman will have peace that, uh, 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 that actually the family needs most. And so uh, we shouldn't be contending for our rights, but we shouldn't be contending for the position that Christ would want us to be in. And so this is the revelation of a woman being a church and uh, the woman being a sanctuary. Uh, but uh, remember, the woman being the church and being that sanctuary, uh, there is something that uh, is profound about the sanctuary. And uh, I, I'll try to uh, bring this one out in a, a language that uh, is, uh, uh, is acceptable. When you look at the church in the sanctuary, we had the Levites and the priests doing what? Working in the church or in the sanctuary because we are trying to make it be one thing. Now, the Levites only were allowed to work in the courtyard and in the holy place. But then the high priest was allowed to go into the what? Into the most holy place where there was all the secrets of God, is it? And so the only person that uh, this woman should allow to have all her secrets is the husband. But when now uh, they come out, they come preaching the holy place in the courtyard, and then they will spread to the camp. And then the marriage cannot work, the courtship cannot work. And this means that uh, you be the grave of the mistakes of your husband, and uh, 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 the husband be uh, uh, the only one who understands what is inside your heart. They say that, uh, you know, and it shouldn't be like this, that uh, it is hard to know what is inside the heart of a woman. Is it true? <laughs> Should it be like that? The woman as a church, as that sanctuary, the priest knew what was in the most holy place. So what is this thing that the woman is hiding from the man? But you don't find that uh, it is a must, and uh, I'm talking these things deliberately because they are in the Bible, that uh, it is a must. Yes, there should be sharing of information, but uh, there is no that point that a woman should pin the, the, a woman should pin the man on, on the wall that uh, he has to share everything. And uh, look at uh, the issue of Abraham going to uh, sacrifice Isaac, because the Lord made it that way because there are some things that uh, the woman will not bear. You cannot take your son and go sacrifice if Doreen knows. 
them. Mm. However converted she is, I can tell you from the principles of the Bible, it will never happen. Sarah was a converted woman. But if she could have known that Abraham was going to do this and this, that house could have not been a house. What, what if, and this was the only child. You are told this is the only child. You know, as a man, the Bible says that uh, Abraham knew that uh, Isaac could be resurrected. But could this come up to the mind of uh, Sarah? And so I'm not saying that we should be hiding secrets, but uh, this issue that uh, a woman is not open to her husband. And then she will let the people outside be able to get into the affairs of the courtship and marriage. It's never to be found in the Bible. We talk about cancers, having counseling and all this stuff and the counseling is good. But now when you reach about uh, uh, the points that you see that uh, will be able to shake the confidence of your partner while you reveal them outside, these are not things to be shared. The heart of the woman should reveal her secret to the husband and not share it with the camp or in the courtyard where everyone will take and then be able to abuse them. And so the woman has to realize that she is being called into sacred nearness with the husband. Because the church is called to be in sacred nearness with Christ, the bride and the bridegroom. And so uh, if we realize that our courtship and our marriage is uh, calling us into sacred nearness with each other, then uh, we will know why we are entering into marriages. But uh, many people enter into marriage uh, and uh, they don't know why they're entering into marriage. By the way, uh, there is a reason why God gave marriage is to be able to reveal his uh, love for the church, to reveal his love for the church. And the marriage should be revealing to the world that we do not have anything to withhold from each other, but we can share freely what we have. And so uh, uh, women in the marriage, they should understand uh, uh, how they have been called to act in their courtship and the marriage so that uh, they may not bring a uh, disrepute to it. But uh, when you have a woman who doesn't understand her role in the marriage and in the courtship, what you have is a problem. You have a uh, uh, the story of uh, of uh, of Sarah. I want us to think about Sarah for a minute, because much has been said about this mother, who was married to the <coughs> father of faith. What made Sarah give uh, Abraham this woman have? Remember, we are looking at this woman where she is. What made Sarah give Abraham her? God had promised to bless the life of Abraham and give him everything that he wanted. And then uh, Sarah, seeing that she was beyond the age of uh, giving birth, she gave Hagar to Abraham. Now, if you have a woman who is not, and be wary when you are going to courtship, if you have a woman who should suggest sin to you. Did Sarah know that polygamy was bad? She knew polygamy was bad. But she went ahead to give Abraham. Now, if you have such a woman in courtship, know that your marriage is not going to work. If you are dating a lady who will entice you to sin, then uh, you have to understand that uh, your marriage will be of sin. And if you can't stand at that point, but there are ladies who are so nagging, they force you to do things and do this and do that only to realize that uh, you have given birth to Ishmael. 
and Ishmael is problems. Why is Ishmael a problem? Because she has to be chased away from the family. I'm talking about where is this woman who can wait on to the Lord to do the things that he has promised he will do. If you are in a relationship where you are person you are getting married to, this lady is forcing you to do things which you can't even afford to do. They may be even righteous things. They may not be seen, but uh, she will need this, she will need that. And then uh, maybe always it narrows down to, do you have finances? She wants a good house, she wants a good dress, she wants this and she wants this. This is a woman professing to know God like Sarah. But she wants something so that she may be called something. You know, uh, Sarah has been given a promise that you will have what? A child. But she can wait on the blessings of the Lord to come at the right time without uh, being forced blessings. And so you have people in relationships and in marriages who want to have forced blessings. They will never be blessings, but they will be problems. And so we should be wary of this. We are talking about talking to young men who are in courtship and will want to go into the marriage. And we are now advising, where is this woman? Because we shall, become, we, we shall come to, where is this man? And we started with the woman because the woman has been given a, 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 a big place in the community because we are told that the woman shapes the nation. The woman is able, uh, uh, sorry for the blackout. Uh, the woman is uh, uh, given these privileges of uh, shaping the character of the home and uh, Christianizing the whole uh, 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 family. And so if we will be in these relationships that uh, uh, we will be forced uh, to obtain the blessings of the Lord before uh, the time comes, we understand that uh, we are not in the right uh, relationship. And uh, uh, instead of uh, thinking that it will be better when we get married, we should be wary of uh, making those uh, uh, haste, uh, uh, haste steps to, uh, to making vows and getting into marriage. And so we should be wary of uh, having uh, people like uh, Sarai who will want uh, 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 Isaac, but uh, they, they, they use means which are Odd to get this Isaac. We should be a people who can wait for our blessings to come at the right time uh, in due season. And uh, if you find the right woman, <clears throat> remember Esther in the book of Esther. If you're having Esther in your life. Esther was a wife of who? Exas. Ahasuerus, the king of Persia, is it? Now, think about this woman. This king was married to Vashti. And uh, Vashti was called in the ceremony that the king was having so that uh, she may display herself before the kings. This was uh, the normal routine of the kings when they are gathered and they have brown wine. But uh, if you have an Esther in your, in your life, then uh, she can be able to dissuade every evil thing that may try to come and persuade you to do things which are not right. We have here a king who is who doesn't fear God? I may say, or an apostate king, and she's having he's having a converted woman, and so this woman behaves in a way that the king is even afraid to call her as he called Vashti to come and display herself before the kings. This is because this woman fears the Lord, and so the woman that fears the Lord, she is able to approach even the husband that is an apostate and then still have the peace in the house. 
just as Esther was able to approach the king and the king stretched the scepter for her to hold. And this is what we are being told. Where is this woman that knows how to have communion with God until she can change things which seems that um, they cannot be changed? And uh, I, I want to advise uh, many people who are struggling with their marriages. I want to advise and uh, those who are struggling with their coaching. Uh, I talked about submission and uh, maybe to just add on that. <clears throat> uh, a woman can uh, persuade a man to do anything. True or false? Almost true. <laughs> Almost true. Brother Zadok, think about uh, Adam and Eve. We are talking, where is this woman who can make things happen? In a godly way, not in a wrong way. Where is this woman? Because many people are, are, are looking for men, but where is this woman that can make things work out in a better way? Women have this power of persuasion. And uh, I know you have read the spirit of prophecy in the Bible so well, you who are here. Did Adam know that the woman had eaten the fruit? Mm -hmm. eh? yeah. He knew very well, is it? Mm -hmm. Because the book of Timothy says that the man was not deceived. He did what he knew he was doing. Eve did not deceive Adam. He persuaded him to take the fruit. So he took it willingly. What is my point here? If a woman can make a man do such a thing, if Adam knew that he's going to die by the way, because the woman came with the fruit, he realized that he had eaten the fruit. And then he knew that if he partook of the fruit, he will die. But what does Adam decide to do? If the woman whom God gave me is going to die, then I don't see any other woman in this world. I have to die with her. This was the greatest love, but uh, also remember that uh, this side of the persuasion, that women can use their power to do everything that is good to persuade their men to do what is good. This is what we are talking about. Where is the woman? Who can persuade the man to do the right thing, not the wrong thing? If Eve could persuade Adam to do the wrong thing, why not have this woman who can persuade the man to do the right thing? Again, think about uh, people like um, people like uh, this woman called Jezebel. He finds a king and leads him to worship Baal. Think about Samson. He finds the lila, and then the lila, he takes the secret and the hair is cut. Now, women can use their opportunities, their God-given talent to do right. In the hands of God, by the way, Sister White says that uh, women, a, a woman in God's hand is a tool that cannot be matched. And also in the hands of the devil, she's a person that you cannot match. She will do everything to bring you down. So why don't we have women who can do everything they can to bring up men to where they should be? Men who are obedient to God. And so women, as even Eve did, although she did a wrong thing, we can have women acting in the opposite direction and bringing their men into subjection that uh, they may be able to do the right thing. So a man will do anything for a woman. And so if a man could do anything for a woman, we are looking for this woman who will be able to persuade this man to love God with all the heart. And then you see, if a man can find this woman, whosoever findeth a wife findeth what? A good thing. This man can die for you. If you prove yourself to be the right woman, this man will die for you. But you want to, a man to die for you when you can't prove yourself to be worth to be died for. This is what people are expecting in their courtship and in their marriage. 
a man who can die for them while they have not proved themselves to be worthy to be died for. And so you keep on complaining in your courtship and in your marriage, thinking that this man will ever come to a point where he can really treat me as a queen. Now, if you will be treated as a queen, behave as a queen. And uh, so the Lord is calling us to a higher calling. Men need to take stands in their marriages, but I'll talk this when I'm dealing where well is the man. When uh, Sarah is approached that uh, she will uh, have a child, and this is uh, in the book of uh, <clears throat> Uh, in the book of uh, Genesis, <clears throat> she laughed in her heart. She laughed in her heart. But uh, this is not the way women should be. We have women who profess to know God, but in their hearts, they are far from God. So we need a really conversion. And how do we know that... Uh, uh, people are converted if they are willing to do the will of God without coercion. So as I come to an end, that uh, talking about uh, having the right woman and having the wrong woman in your life will uh, uh, just attract problems. The book of Genesis chapter 25. Genesis. Genesis 25, as uh, we come to an end. 25 verse 6. The book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 6. Where is the woman? Are you such a woman that uh, will infect your husband with a spirit of contention in his heart? Look at this. Here, Sarah has died. And uh, Abraham takes to himself a wife, Kentura. And in verse 6, we are told, But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts and sent them away from Isaac, his son, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. Where did uh, Abraham get this spirit of sending? his own sons away. Remember the story of Ishmael and Hagar. She said that I cannot live with this bond woman anymore. She is the one that gave Hagar, and then Hagar gave birth to Ishmael, but she is not willing to live with the son of Abraham anymore. She has to be chased away. And so this spirit continued with Abraham even after he married, uh, uh, he married uh, Kentura. And uh, these are not things that should be happening. If you find a wife who is infecting you such a spirit of uh, uh, contention in your heart, then uh, you should know that this is not a marriage that uh, should be ended in. And then, uh, as I said, as I come to an end, Second Samuel chapter 6. Let us look at the story of Second Samuel chapter 6. Where is this woman? that uh, will be able to nurture her courtship, be able to nurture her marriage. If she happened to enter into the marriage and knowing the man fully, and now she is in the marriage, and it's not something that should force divorce. God forbid that we should be entering into marriages to divorce. There are circumstances that uh, will prompt divorce, but it was not so from the beginning. Divorce was not the will of God. Man was to live with the woman forever. But now sin has come into the world and divorce are there, but this is not the thing that the Lord will delight in. This is David coming from the war. And uh, to bring the ark. Remember, again, David, uh, let me share my screen. Second Samuel chapter six. Let us read this as we draw some last points. Where is the woman who can be a good woman to a husband? If you are in such a relationship and in courtship and in marriage, what can you do? And uh, this is something which is dangerous. Look at Second Samuel chapter six. And uh, again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. 
And David arose and went with the people that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up what? Then the ark of God, is it? Whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the cart. Going downwards. <coughs> And uh, David did what? And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments, made of fire wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbers and on cornets and on cymbals. And then the story of Uzziah comes, but uh, I want to see what happens to Mika when they are coming. David danced before the Lord. Because in the first instance, when David went to bring the ark, Uzzah touched the ark and he died, is it? And then David knew he had done wrong thing using the instruments and the cut to bring the ark. But now David reforms and then he goes. Mark my words well, he reforms because there was a bridge, is it? Mm -hmm. And then he goes to bring a... Uh, 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 the ark again from the house of Obed, and he has reformed the instrument, he has reformed everything, and he sees everything is going right, and he celebrates before the Lord. And then the kingly robe is torn, and he remains with the normal clothes, and then he meets this woman, who happens to be the wife, the first wife. And they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in his place in the midst of the, the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offering and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offerings, burnt offerings and peace offering, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts. And he dealt among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well as the women as men, to everyone a cake of bread and a good piece of flesh and flagon of wine. So all the people departed, everyone to his house, verses 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto Michal, it was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel, therefore I'll play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and will be the best in my own sight. And of the maid servants which thou hast spoken of, of them shall be had in on. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. There's something that you should understand that is happening there. If you, ha if, if you have this woman in courtship who doesn't appreciate the things of the Lord, leave her alone. She'll stay barren in your life forever. This is an admonition to men. If you are in such a marriage, then you know you are in problems. But now the die has been cast. What shall we do? It is to live under those reforms that you have. And other people will be blessed even if she doesn't get blessed. And this is all the heaven that she'll ever have on this earth. She will be barren all, all, all her life. People are stuck in barren relationships. People are stuck in barren uh, uh, marriages, but it was because of this woman not realizing. And this happens so with the ministers. We are not talking about um, ministers going outside and leaving their wives. They don't care about them. And then they, 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 they want to return back and their wives uh, welcome them well. No, that is not what I'm talking about. But a woman who doesn't realize that her husband who is a minister has been called by God. And whenever he comes home, he has to receive a, a warm welcome. This woman is barren. And all she can bring in the house and in the heart of the man is barrenness. Unless the man realizes that his calling is after God and continues in what God has called him. There is the reason why reforms have broken in the houses because women have not embraced them. 
And because people entered into these courtships and they said, okay, this one, as time goes by, you will be able to leave it. This time, as time goes by. No, please don't enter. There are some fundamental truths that we hold as a people in this end times. And if you are in a courtship where a lady doesn't have these principles, please, we are laying down this foundation so that you may not go into the marriage. Right now, we seem so harsh in the presentation, is it? Uh, it, it can make somebody say, no, now I cannot bear this. This is a perfectionist. You hear a lady saying that this man is a perfectionist. I cannot marry him. What, what we need are those perfectionists, by the way. We need perfect men and perfect ladies to marry. And if the whole word of God will not be embraced by a lady, and she calls a man a perfectionist, then it will be good for you to be a perfectionist, but not have a wife so long as you are following the word of God. But uh, thinking that you can go with the courtship and bring it in marriage and uh, then uh, you are brought in a place where you can compromise. Let us learn from David. He had reformed and did everything. And when the wife went against him, he said that if you do not want this blessing because David comes back home to bless the household, but the wife is not willing to be blessed. Now, if you are in a marriage where the spouse is not willing to be blessed by the word of God, then you know you are in trouble, but your work is to remain sincere to God. And if her life remains barren, barren, then the people outside will be blessed with your, uh, uh, the, the gift that the Lord has given to you. What I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, women should understand that uh, men have been called into important roles also, and they should be able to help them cultivate these roles rather than being hard on them. And so what was wrong with Michal? Michal was the daughter of Saul, is it? And uh, Saul had a son, Jonathan, and Jonathan was to be the king. But what did Jonathan do? He gave everything to David. And so the kingship passed from David, uh, Saul's house into David's house, is it? But it was by the will of God. It was by the will of God that he persuaded Jonathan to do so. And so Michal here is harboring some mischief and grudge in her heart. And so you, you will always find that uh, there's something going on in the heart. By the way, the things that happens in courtship and marriage, don't think that uh, they are just things that are straight related to us. Somebody is fighting something in the past. Like Mika is fighting uh, how the kingship was taken from Saul and Jonathan to David. There's a story behind the story. And you may think that you are just dealing with the trouble in your house, but that, that may not be the case. You are dealing with the troubles of this woman's past life. And so we should look beyond what we are just facing at that point and see how is the life of this person? What was her past? and uh, what did she experience and what is she bringing in my marriage? If there's something to be talked about, it should be talked about in courtship so that we should not have surprises in the marriage. But people will not want to open up in courtship thinking that if I open up and now, this man will dump me and leave me alone. Is it? That is why people don't open up in relationship. Oh, it is this and it is this. And then they bring it in marriage and they want still the marriage to be a happy marriage. You hid this from me in courtship, and now you want to reveal to me in marriage. So what difference could it have made in courtship that will it make in marriage? If I could refuse it in courtship, then I cannot accept it, accept it in marriage. And so there need to be an opening up when courtship is uh, happening. And uh, many women fear to tell about their story and many men fear to tell about their story. And uh, I'm thankful, sometimes I speak about things which are practical. When uh, uh, I met my wife, I told her everything about me. When I, when I say everything, I cannot mention everything here on the pulpit because some things are not to be even mentioned. They are abominations. And I told her, you know what? This is son. So choose if you are getting married to son. You are not getting married to somebody you don't know. And I told her, this is the man you are getting married to. And I think that has helped our marriage to stand somehow because she knew who I am. From my childhood to the adulthood, to the years she got me, she knows me very well. 
She knows what I have passed through, the dirty that I have had in my life, and all these things. And so if she can accept me in courtship, knowing who I am, there's nothing she can accept me in marriage. And even that will uh, help her know her prayer items. What are her prayer items? What to pray about me that should be changed instead of struggling with me and quarreling with me to change things which they cannot be changed by human efforts. Now she knows where to direct her prayers. This is the weakness that he has. This is the strength that he has. It helps when you open up in courtship and people know your weakness and your strength. You know what happens? Uh, people start working on your strength to overcome your weakness. But uh, if you start hiding up things in courtship, you people do not know what really is your strength and what is your weakness. People do not know what is your gift and what is not your gift. And so you will always have these misplaced priorities. The person expects you to be this when you are that. And maybe she expecting you to be something that even is not a gift in your life. And so these are the things to be shared in a courtship so that uh, they may be uh, 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 accepted or rejected. By the way, there is no fear in explaining to a wife whom you are going to marry. Because I, 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 was, I had already decided I'm marrying her. And if she had decided in her heart she is still trying out men, then that is her problem. But for me, I'm, I'm decided I'm doing what? I'm married. And so uh, I, have, I commit myself to this woman and in everything. And then decide, the Lord, this is the woman I'm married. Reveal to me what to tell her. And if she's a good woman, and if she's a godly woman, then uh, she will be able to deal with you in everything. And uh, so this helps out to square things. This helps out to know how to even deal with uh, your spouse uh, and to deal with their personality. And so courtship again has to be extended uh, in, in marriage. There's uh, a tendency that uh, once a people have found uh, whatever they wanted, they, they stop everything. But uh, courtship has to be extended into marriage. I mean, uh, those sweet moments, and they have to be cultivated more. But uh, the reason why marriages are not working is that courtship stopped when they married. But courtship should never stop in marriage. I mean, there is this pursuing of, uh, of each other. And uh, you may say, this is a worldly thing, no. Find me a place where, this is the te last text I'm reading. Isaac married Rebecca and then she was, he was comforted. The book of Genesis. This is the last text. Comforted. This is Genesis chapter 24. Look at this. Courtship continued in marriage. Yes. <clears throat> Verse 66 says, and the servant told Isaac all things he had done, that is Eliezer, in bringing Rebekah, is it? And then, and Isaac brought her into his mother's, mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became what? His wife, and did what? And loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. Now, when you read that text, there are so many things that are happening in the book of Matthew, uh, Genesis 24, 67. You find that uh, Isaac had never met Rebecca. Is it? W was there any love? Was there any prayer love? Why did Isaac marry Rebecca? <laughs> the father brought her. That, that choice of her father, of, of, of his father, he was the best for him. You go up some few verses earlier. <clears throat> and Isaac came from the way of the well of La Hiroi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at eventide. What was he meditating about? She was meditating about Rebecca. 
The context is about Rebecca, the married life. The mother has just died. And then he is thinking about what shall my life be? What kind of a woman will I ever get in marriage? And so he's meditating about what is coming her way because Eliezer is coming with a woman whom he has to live with forever. And he has to be a joy to the father. And so he's meditating about this thing and he lifted up his eyes, meditating and lifting up his eyes. And so, and behold, the camels were coming. And Rebecca lifted up her eyes and when she saw Isaac, she did what? What is that? Humility. For a man, she had never known. She came down from the coming. For she had said unto the servant, what man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, it is my master. Therefore she took a veil and covered her face. A sign of respect, reverence. That is what the angels do when they are in the presence of God. They veil their faces for reverence. This, this is a woman who has never met a man but uh, before they even come to bonding, there's that reverence. Do you wait for your man to give you everything? And then that is when you revere him. This is where ladies fail. They will wait for something so as to act. And so, and the servant told Isaac all things he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rebekah. And she became his wife and he loved her. She became a wife he loved. Courtship continues in marriage. As you continue having this person, you continue learning and drawing closer to her. The drawing closer to her should not stop in courtship. But as you are married, that is when you should even cleave together. Because before you are married, you are not even cleaving together. But after marrying, that is when you should even strive to cleave together because now you are one flesh. You are not no longer two people. Maybe in courtship, we can still say that you are two people. But ladies should be seeking to draw closer to their men and men seeking to draw closer to their wives even as they end a marriage. And Isaac was comforted. Who comforted Isaac? Rebecca replaced the man. That is the issue. That is the issue. He was comforted. He could have never been comforted with somebody who was quarreling with him, who has stopped to pursue him, who has stopped to show every character of humility and reverence. And so if these things, you see, they are joined together, but the characters that Isaac needed were shown in courtship. Courtship that only took some minutes because they didn't have a lot of time. Rebecca is coming. She shows humility and then reverence, and then they are married just within some few hours. And then, uh, 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 if uh, really women would like to have good marriages, then they should be thinking about this thing. They should be studying this prophet. And then, uh, these things, and then, uh, where is the woman? The woman is in Proverbs chapter 31. And, uh, in, in, in Proverbs 31, we get their Dorcas, we get their Abigail, we get their uh, Hannah. And uh, I said I'll read the last thing, but uh, the Lord reminds me of Proverbs 31. This is a, a profound chapter which uh, everyone has to study. It's about the church and Christ, but also it speaks about couples. And so <coughs> you see, this is a prophecy. This is about Christ and the church. But remember always Christ in the church is the husband and the wife. And so we continue, it says that, uh, who can find what? A vicious woman, we are looking for a woman. And this is the woman. For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You are in three weeks in marriage and all is evil. You don't have a good wife. She seeketh what? Wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. And uh, I remember I used to tell the youths some story. If you are in courtship, try out the lady that you are courting. And now uh, I'm stealing for you a secret. 
which I shouldn't, you shouldn't be here. Uh, try to test if the woman is economist. Okay? And if you can give out 200 shillings and you get a change. Now don't call me a mice, I'm not a mice. I'm a very liberal person. <laughs> but I, I try to test things out. And I'm warning men, if you have this lady who, whom actually you can give money and she can be able to do something, the Bible has no place for that woman being your wife. Because he says, it says the Bible, she seeks what? Wool, flax, work it willingly with her. Do you have a lady who is productive or is barren as Mika? Have you tested your courtship to see that this woman will bring an increment into your family or she will be a luggage? She may not be working. Good. It's not a must. Your wife must work. And by the way, her sanctuary is at home. It is not in the field to battle with the problems of life. The, the wife belongs at home. If you have a contention with that, have it with the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. The place of a woman is in the home where she doesn't have to bustle and hustle for everything in the house. But when the man comes, and this has to be tested in courtship, and men will never want to test out this if their ladies are economists. You will give the, the lady money, she will not, never bring something back. This is vanity. Does she have an idea that uh, with this small money that I, we are having, I can do something with it? Does she have proposals in courtship that even when you marry, you are not entering in the house as strangers who have to start at zero. At least there is investment going on. That you enter into the house, you have investments. And then uh, she is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from what? Afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and portion to her maidens. She considereth her field and do what? So Buy it. it. With the fruit of her hands, she planted what? The vineyard. And uh, I'm so thankful my mother approved my wife. I didn't marry her because my mother approved her. But as Brother Zadok said, there, there are things we should converse with our, our parents, what they want in life. You won't bring, your mother can't tell you that I can't communicate in another language. I need somebody I can communicate. And then you bring about somebody which she can communicate with. That is actually not being fair to your own parents. And so let the men and the women sit with, their, the, with the people whom they are intending to marry. And I'm so thankful that uh, when uh, I took uh, my wife to my mom and uh, she went there and I was not there. I was on a mission. She went and visited and they stayed there for a week. And the mother said, it's okay, you can marry this lady. And we had a conversation with her. Why do you think I should marry her? And she told me, okay, she, she has the, the qualities that I have been looking. So my mom was also looking uh, a lady that had some qualities. And so it, it is always good to hear your parents say that uh, the lady has qualities which she has been looking into. And so uh, she rises up, she considered her field and by it with the fruit of her hands, she planted her vineyard. She guarded her loins with strength and strengthens her arms. Now, this woman is uh, actually proud of her man and that she will do everything. You see what the woman is doing here is the work that uh, somehow men ought to do. Consider field and buy it and bring things, food from afar off and all this stuff. These are things that a man ought to be doing. But th because this woman loves the man and the man is a straightforward man, the woman does all these things. She guarded her loins with strength and uh, strengthens her arms. She perceived that her mercadise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She laid her hands to the spindle and her hands hold the distal. Verse 18, her light doesn't go out at night. When even the marriage itself is not working, her candle will never go out. She will always have the light burning in the house. This is the woman that we are looking at. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Will you marry a wife who buys everything? She can't do anything with her hands. She is a supermodel. 
She, she can't work out with her hand. She make it fine linen and sell it, it and deliver it gardens unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with what? Wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of the household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done viciously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. We are looking for a woman that feareth the Lord. This is the bottom line of everything we have been talking. Where is the woman? The woman is that woman that feareth the Lord. May the Lord help us to choose wisely our courtships. And if we have been uh, found ourselves in marriages which are not working, then let us approach the Lord in prayer so that uh, he may be able to do the things that we have not been able to do with our own might. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much because you are counting on us to restore everything that uh, the devil has done away with. And Lord, with uh, human strength, we cannot be able to do them. But with the power of Christ in dwelling within, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Help us to restore our courtships. Help us to restore our marriages. But more so, Lord, help us to raise families which are acceptable before thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. May the good Lord bless you. And uh, as we continue sharing in these topics, may he continue drawing us closer to him in every way. <clears throat>